It's November 10th, 2009. You sleep soundly in your bed as you ponder about the journey you're about to embark for the next... Wait, November 10th, 2009? <laughs> to some, Modern Warfare 2 is considered to be the best Call of Duty game to ever release. And if you disagree with the statement, I understand. I disagree, Gary. There's a lot of great options to choose from, but something that's absolutely undeniable is how influential this game was for the future of first-person shooters. When you look at the lineup of Call of Duty post-2012, there's a lot of games that were bad, underwhelming, or could have been better. But for a $60 purchase, MW2 was a very sound transaction for your credit card, or your debit card, or cash. Money. A good campaign, fun multiplayer, well-made side content like Spec Ops that the Modern Warfare reboot could even get right in the year 2019. Also the museum mode, where you can see all the cool guys from the campaign, where you then ring a bell that makes them want to kill you. If you put one fin on that boat, don't touch the boat. What the fuck? Modern Warfare 2 is the most popular Call of Duty to ever exist. And that's for good reasons and controversial reasons that we're gonna touch on in a little bit. The long-awaited video game Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 is expected to sell millions of copies over the next few weeks. <laughs> But this video isn't just about Modern Warfare 2, it's also about Modern Warfare 2. I know it's confusing, <laughs> you thought I was trying to find the Zodiac Killer when I was thinking of a title for this video. But first let's talk about video game counterculture. We're in a weird time period where a lot of old media is coming back as new, creating discussion on how we should value reboots and continuations. Wolfenstein, Saints Row, Doom, and Modern Warfare are a couple examples of recent reboots to popular originals. And while some are loved, others are hated, starting a cycle of argumentation. The main issue I find with counterculture toward reboots, not just video games, but media in general, is fairness. If I talk bad about the new MW2 to some I'm stuck in the past blinded by nostalgia. And if I like the new MW2 then I'm a bot who just wants to consume any garbage that blocks my path to sit on the giant rock. <laughs> And if I play both sides, I'm a dirty fence sitter that deserves to be put down because nobody likes a fence sitter. Get the f down, man. There's no winning with these discussions. So my goal here isn't to win by dunking on low-hanging fruit or mindlessly clap for something new like certain chills in other communities that I've poked fun at in other videos. I'm just here to run my lips for a few minutes like the narcissist I am. So whatever I say, I'll say it unapologetically. Okay, now that we got that out of the way, for this video, I'm gonna work backwards from my Black Ops 2 video and start with the campaign before I talk about the multiplayer. When I discussed the Black Ops 2 campaign, I called it a fun, cheesy 80s action movie. So if the Black Ops series is an 80s action movie, then Modern Warfare is Mission Impossible. Look at this, oh my fucking god! Oh my god! The MW2 campaign is a ballsy, fun adventure with a lot to pick apart and talk about. But we're not gonna do that just yet. Modern Warfare 2... 20... 22 is the newest campaign to release in the Call of Duty cycle. And when we talk about the new, it gives us an opportunity to talk about the old. This isn't a retrospective, so I'm not gonna talk your head off about the old campaign for 30 minutes straight. Shut up! It's so much more Shut up! Maybe one day in a different video, but this video is about the Clash of the Titans, which isn't really fair in all honesty. MW2. I can't take this shit no more. For now on, we're calling it MWII, like SpongeBob. Oh. MWII hasn't even officially been out for two months yet, and some are already crowning it as the best campaign ever in the Call of Duty franchise. And for once in their miserable fucking existence, IGN gave a Call of Duty project a fair review, for it to only get ripped apart in a matter of minutes. I can't even be mad. IGN gave Vanguard a higher score. There's no consistency, so fuck them. You'd give anything in the world to trade places with him. New is fun, new is cool, and new is blinding. And TikTok has made echo chambers stronger than ever. Back in the day, nerds and losers would join a subreddit and circle jerk to whatever the fuck they wanted. But it didn't matter since it was only visible to others in the empire of dirt. Are you planning on taking two old girls? No. But now the whole mainstream could do it through the most popular app in the world. I understand. It's fun to post about the game. I also like when Ghost says the funny Spanish word and somebody edits a sombrero and beer in his hand. However! and the fucking cat edits and Drake edits. <laughs> okay, what the fuck is this fandom? 
Where the discussion gets toxic though, is when we start comparing it to MW2, the actual MW2. Let's all remember one thing. This only exists because of this. And if this was dog shit, this would cease to exist. Modern Warfare 2's campaign has aged really well. And this is because of how fun and outlandish the story is, making it very memorable. There's a lot of cool story beats and fun elements that were left out of II's campaign, and it makes it really lackluster and kind of underwhelming after the initial playthrough. I know a lot of you are still on a high right now, but once those rose tinted glasses give out, you might start to see the cracks in the foundation. Modern Warfare 2 and Modern Warfare 2 are different games with different characters and different stories, but they're still both MW2. So you have a shepherd and you got a ghost and a shadow company, no Russian and multiple parallels done in different ways. So if you think comparisons can't be made, you're wrong and I'm gonna do it anyway. If you make a game to write off another game's shadow, then live up to it or deal with the annoying morons like me who scream at a microphone to get some validation from others who might share the same opinion as me. Oh, uh. <laughs> Hello. II's campaign is around five hours and 30 minutes long, which is typical of a COD campaign, but for the year 2022, it's kind of underwhelming. Oh, fuck off. Within this campaign, you play as the operators from Task Force 141, who are trying to track down missiles from a bad guy named Hassan, who's a terrorist that live streams. And within this journey, you go through twists and turns, dealing with the cartel, a wicked betrayal, clearing doors, clearing doors, clearing doors, clearing doors clearing more fucking doors until the game's ending. I'm not gonna judge the game's premise too hard because when put under a microscope, both campaigns are fucking stupid in a real world sense. Like the whole cause of World War III in the original MW2 was because you're trying to gain Makarov's trust by doing a terrorist attack that was made to blame the United States. And then he kills you to blame the United States, which makes Russia invade the United States. America he has no rules, no boundaries. He doesn't flinch at torture, human trafficking, or genocide. This would never happen. It's make-believe. It's, it, it's a Fugazi, Fugazi. It, it's not fucking real. If if both games were accurate to military standards and practices, they'd all be shooting semi-automatic weapons while going at snail's pace every mission. And the Marines would never fire the rifles and just play basketball. You kind of do that in I.I. to be fair, but once in a while you get to shoot Mexicans. What do you mean by that? We're not playing Arma or Squad. Let's all calm the hell down and stop trying to pump our chest and pretend that it's not fun to shoot guns and blow shit up. Time out. Let's call a truce real quick and share a couple of kind words. This game looks amazing. Is it unoptimized? Fuck if I know. I played this game with an RTX 3080, which is a championship moment for me. And all my old COD videos are in the game like gas, so I've required decent optimization to get me through the winter. Starting a lobby, good luck if you don't- Shut the fuck up! But one issue I found is that whenever I died and respawned, the game would go through frame purgatory. I'm not trying to flex, by the way. I looked at the discussions and the general opinion is that the optimization is decent, but could be better. To all the low spec warriors, can you please tell me how it's been for you down in the comments? I swear I care about your opinion and it's totally not to get more engagement on this video. Whoa, whoa. I didn't think the graphics could improve much from 2019 since the game was the debut for Infinity War's new engine, which was far ahead of its competitors. Modern Warfare 2019 still looks really good, but surprisingly, II doesn't look like a copy and paste. Okay, it kind of does, but it looks better. Stop being a Grinch. The sound design, textures, facial animation, and gunplay blow the old MW2 out the water. That's expected. It's a 2022 game, not to pop its bubble, but the game still deserves praise nonetheless. And MW2 still looks really good for a 2009 product, but you could definitely tell which is the newer one when put side by side. The reload animations are smooth, the guns pack a punch, and they also sound really crisp. The game is amazing in all its technicals, and isn't like a Far Cry 6 or other cheap looking games as of recent. For reference, this campaign released around the same time as Gotham Knights, and that looks and plays like a fucking mobile game. This isn't the game by the way. This is the DLC for Batman Arkham Knight, a game that released in 2015. This is Gotham Knights, that released a day after II's campaign came out. What the fuck is this piece of shit? It's odd that Call of Duty is now in this position, because at one point DICE stood over COD for how ahead they were in realism due to the Frostbite engine, but now they flipped. Battlefront 2 though, <laughs> Ooh, <laughs> you still look really good. My biggest gripe with this campaign was that I had to play almost all the story from the perspective of Task Force 141. I say almost because you play a partial segment from the perspective of the Mexican army, but then at the end of the mission they too become a part of Task Force 141. You also shoot explosives from a plane. Okay. okay. You play as Gaz, Soap, 
and Rodolfo partially for the Mexican army segments. In the campaign's cutscenes and story circulate around Soap and Gaz while you play as them, making you the smaller half of a dynamic which causes these characters to not be a part of the game any larger besides the player's perspective. The cool thing about a silent cop protagonist is that while still being a character, they're so minimal to the point where you begin to chameleon into them. When you play as Ramirez as an MW2, you're just a normal ranger, surrounded by other normal rangers, making you feel really small to the big picture, which lets you get immersed as just another expendable marine in a big war. And on the opposite perspective, you're Roach, who's an important member to Task Force 141, but you still chameleon as you follow your higher-ups going on crazy missions. Roach, follow me and stay outside. Alongside other call sign members who drop like flies. In that campaign, you're an important member to Soap, Ghost, and Price. And you fit in the dynamic because it's intentionally designed for Roach to be more important than, let's say, Scarecrow and Ozone, because Roach is you. It's you doing these missions and killing these people and getting betrayed. And it's all done from the perspective of a faceless mute. The character not talking or having a face isn't the point. Roach could communicate and look like Henry Cavill and it wouldn't make a difference. The point is that playing from a perspective that isn't a main character lets the player be more involved with the game's surroundings and its story. You play as Soap in Modern Warfare 1, who is a minor immersive role but made a lot of impact, and you got to experience it straight from his perspective. You play as Roach in MW2, who did the same thing, and got betrayed directly from his perspective. Yuri, Price, Frost, Ramirez, Jackson, Allen, and many more do this exact same thing. Situations are more impactful when it's you directly doing them, scripted or not. It's why the twist in II doesn't work well while the one in MW2 does. They both blindside you, but one involves you doing something directly that also gets you killed directly. In II, it's a cutscene with serious whiplash, and only serves as a transition to a mission with experimental mechanics. It's a shit cutscene, and we'll talk about it later. The point is that while the cutscenes are gorgeous and look really good, they suck total ass. It makes the game lack immersion and rob scenes of any impact. Modern Warfare 2019 had the exact same problem they decided to double down, and having a bad dual perspective does not assist this format either. A lot of COD characters aren't always blank boards. They have names and are involved with the plot to a degree while still providing immersion to the player. In II, the dual perspectives are from Kyle, who is now Gaz, and Soap, who is a sergeant instead of a captain under the wing of Ghost, who is a lieutenant in comparison to MW2, where Soap was a captain once under the wing of Price, to then have Ghost be under the wing of him as a lieutenant, to then have Roach most like- You get it, there's a big spec ops love triangle. But the problem is that in II, you have two dynamics that are the exact same thing. Ghost and Price are higher bulldogs, while Gaz and Soap are the second men under their wing. Each dynamic even has a little side character that tags along throughout the campaign. In Modern Warfare 2019, Alex, Kyle, and Pharaoh were original characters with missions that varied between each perspective. Paths cross in the campaign eventually, but when you played as Kyle, you were getting your hands dirty with Price. Whereas when you played as Alex, there was more action-oriented missions. You even got to play alongside Marines like all the other Modern Warfare games besides I High. And Pharaoh's segments were story-driven, giving context about who she is and where she lives. It also provides some shock value for the player. I I having the same two perspectives makes the game get very repetitive. It starts to feel like you're doing the the same thing over and over again. Task Force 141 slow paced tactical shit. Task Force 141 slow paced tactical shit. Mexican slow paced tactical shit. Then you get an AC 130 where you blow shit up in a fun car chase segment. Hell yeah! That's what I'm talking about, Shadows! You know I love that shit! Slow paced tactical shit. Watch for squirters. What the fuck? Fuck. The mission alone with Ghost and Soap should have been one of the only slower paced missions because when you get to it you feel fatigued due to all the other slow paced missions which is a bummer because it's genuinely a really good mission. Play as a main character that's separated from another main character stuck in a dark unfamiliar city as you're being hunted. Two goldfish are in a tank. Go on. One turns to the other and says, you know how to drive this thing. Little army humor. Careful who you trust sergeant. People you know can hurt you the most. Good advice, LT. I want to be like you when I grow up. You want to be better than me, Johnny. It's nice to see Ghost and Soap talk to each other, whereas in the original Modern Warfare format, you would have stayed mute as you got bark directions from somebody else. Roach, this is going to take some time. Go with Meat and Royce and check out the favela for any signs of Rojas. That's where this guy is headed. There he is. <laughs> There's the god of war. It's a good counterpart to the rooftop segment in the favela mission in the 2009 game. In that mission, you're filled with anxiety as you sprint back to the helicopter with nothing to defend yourself, while a timer is above your head, ticking. But in II, you're alone, having to scrounge for supplies to fight via guerrilla warfare by setting traps and being patient. And in between these actions, there's tacked on dialogue trees where you have soap and ghosts whisper to each other with witty dialogue to fill the dead air. Show my face. Yes, sir. Negative. Are you ugly? 
quite the opposite giving them both more personality. It also feels natural, whereas the other perspective, it feels tacked on with no impact later, while also lacking the wit and interest between Soap and Ghost. What the fuck is this? What's your favorite weapon? I don't have one. Gotta use the right tool for the job. What's yours, Kyle? LMG. Firepower and high mag capacity. I like your style, Gaz. Oh yeah, I didn't know you were such an enthusiast as well. Why was the strawberry crying? Alone was the much stronger segment and outshines the mission with Price and Gaz, where they try to recapture the feeling of all gillied up, but lack the charm and claustrophobia as you do repetitive objectives in a big sandbox without much creativity. All Alone did everything much better. The perspective problem ruins the pace of the game and makes missions like this have less of an impact. Because before this mission you were fighting on an oil rig, and then you play the slower paced mission, and then right after this mission, you have to walk ghost around on a camera to break Alejandro out of prison. To then have a combat segment where you shoot a Annoying armored enemies that are super fucking OP. In MW2, the dual perspectives help pace out these moments while still bridging a gap in between events from the same conflict but from a different perspective. For example, as Task Force 141, you infiltrate a submarine base that's holding an AMP missile to then launch it. After this, you switch to the perspective of a ranger who's in the midst of the repercussions from that same AMP launch. The tactical parts of MW2 still have action, but the narrative purpose is important and requires special forces like Task Force 141. And in between these spec op missions, being a normal marine adds variety and is also really Really fucking fun. Excluding the tutorial, the first mission in MW2 you play as a ranger in regular combat, to then play as a spec ops operative who's stealing back United States government intel halfway across the world. Even in COD 4 you play as both SAS and the United States Marine Corps under the same narrative, and both perspectives have highlight missions. Or in MW3 you play as Delta Force in the middle of World War 3, then go back to Price Soap and Yeri, to then go back to playing as Delta Force again, and it made the game so much fun. It's not an annoying whiplash and helps the game from not getting repetitive. I assume the developers saw how much positive attention they got from the Clean House mission in 2019 and decided to overkill it. But Clean House stood out so much because it didn't overstay its welcome. Alex playing alongside Griggs of the Marines is great. Alex being in the Middle East while Price and Gaz do their spec off stuff before meeting together creates variety. I like being Task Force 141, infiltrating oil rigs, flying over castles, fighting in close quarter combat in the favela, and defending a safe house full of incriminating evidence. But I also like defending Burger Town and fighting outside the White House and being in a complete war zone. II still has fun mission gimmicks, but they get overused, making them feel really repetitive. In Modern Warfare 2019, the Marines still had slow paced segments, but they were creative. Like for one segment, you go inside of a hospital where you have to pick and choose who's pretending to be dead or not. I'm not saying that everything needs to be a shooting gallery. You could still be creative from a different perspective, but II just recycles too much. Like, the last mission in II's campaign was a cool callback to a fun mission from COD Ghost, where you rappel down a skyscraper, but then they shoehorn in the same gimmicks from All Alone, and it just made me roll my eyes. Even the first mission has you clearing doorways to then defend a helicopter to then clear more doorways. Why can't you choose to defend the down helicopter or not? I know for narrative reasons you need to find Hassan, but why couldn't they just write it to where you defend the down helicopter? Like a Black Hawk down segment without having to shove in the breach and clear shit. You're going to end up doing it over and over again anyway. So it's not like you're losing something precious. The constant stealth is not like clean house and most of the time it's unnecessary. And the game having no guts either just makes it very lackluster, which brings up the next thing I really don't enjoy about this campaign. It has no guts. From the jump of this game, you get interactive segments that make you believe there might be nuance, like Black Ops 2, but it ends up being more like a telltale game. Say it to me, asshole, what you said to my girl. Excuse me, son. Telling the little girl she's gonna die. Wanna scare people, scare me. Motherfucker. Okie dokie. She's gonna die. Son of a bitch. And the Oscar goes to... No guts, but only illusions. In the Modern Warfare reboot games, you constantly get lectures about choices and consequences. Where do we draw the line, sir? Wherever you need it, soldier. We get dirty, and the world stays clean. So he was here. Lost him when we secured the crash site. Are you saying we shouldn't have helped? Choices have consequences. But you make no choices, while the consequences are non-existent. Everything is scripted, so when you do something off the page, you go back to the last checkpoint until you do what the game wants. Alejandro's by there with the shadows. All stations, clear the rig now. I say again, clear the rig. Roger, what's the count? One minute. Copy on the move. Time to fuck around here, Sergeant. Get on the controls. Johnny, you're wasting time. What the fuck? Shit! We're locked out. It's gonna go. Charles away. Shit. Let's go. 
Let's enjoy our handiwork, Sergeant. Same thing with the clearing segments. The game wants you to be on edge and play the part of judge, jury, and executioner. But if you hypothetically have a trigger finger, you get no repercussions and just go back to the last save checkpoint. Drop your weapon. Fuck you! Get out of my it still has the same problems as Modern Warfare 2019, where the game attempts to be smart talking about how getting dirty makes the world stay clean, but it's all an illusion with no guts. In that game, you also get punished if you try to test limits, so you end up doing nothing and just become an observer to shock value. In Modern Warfare 2019, they showed you cruelty and violence from the Russian army, but you were always a bystander and actually did nothing yourself, and that's because the game wouldn't let you. You shoot the butcher's family, go back to a checkpoint. You open a door to save a kid, go back to a checkpoint. The Piccadilly segment has a terrorist attack that kills an innocent civilians. And later in the mission, Captain Price sacrifices a civilian who can't be saved while you play as the good guy who does nothing and just observes. You don't get to make any decisions or choose anyone's fate or how actions play out. The game's not comfortable doing that, but the game is comfortable rewriting American war crimes while villainizing Russia for them, which makes the attempt at edgy realism come off as cheap one-dimensional propaganda, with a clear indication of who the good guys and bad guys are. And the game waiting to kill a child in a smoke cloud shows that it doesn't care about grittiness. It just wants to be advertised as a gritty experience. Because if they decided to write the game with some guts, not only does it make the good guys look bad, it also messes up the game's rating, which means less money. So of course, II's campaign doesn't fix this. It ends up being a generic story with no guts while having no attempts to be interesting with this narrative like other Call of Duty games. And that's because this game's story and characters are fucking garbage. Hassan, <laughs> Shepard, and Graves, when he is the bad guy, are boring and forgettable. And the fact that nobody is talking about the new Shepard at all in a good light shows some serious red flags that aren't being addressed. The conflict of II is that you bomb a weapons deal between Russia and Iran that kills the general of Iran. So an Iran second in command named Hassan gets American missiles for a revenge scheme, but you don't know how he got the missiles, where he is, or what he plans to do with them. You then find out a Los Alamos cartel is smuggling Hassan across the border, so you partner with the Mexican army and shadow company to go get him. You get him, but it's illegal to kill him on Mexican territory, so you let him go. But you hack his phone to find out that he talked to somebody who could be smuggling missiles. On this mission, a stupid bitch gets captured, so you do a whole mission to rescue the dumb bitch, most likely because they wanted to show Farah off for the mission. Then you find the leader of the cartel by sneaking in and pretending to be a rat. You find out that she's like this really hot Mexican girl who got a power vacuum. So you take her hostage, she spoon feeds you and why she's harboring a terrorist. So you make a deal with her. She gives you a missile location and when you get back, she'll also tell you where Hassan is in exchange you leave Las Armas. So you find the missile, you blow it up. And the twist that makes Shadow Company and Shepard a villain is that they want Alejandro's base and don't want Task Force 1 for 1 to be a part of the mission anymore. So Graves gives you the option to walk away with no violence. But then you find out that Alejandro Alejandro's men were arrested, then Alejandro gets arrested, so you kill Shadow Company people, so he gets shot in the shoulder and it doesn't affect him at all and you escape. You're alone for a little bit, then you escape and sneak to a safe house. You then break Alejandro out of prison and Price gives the reveal of why Shepard betrayed you and took the base. There was a Black Ops mission where Shadow Company was giving missiles to allies in the Middle East who were fighting Russians, but they were intercepted by Russian PMCs who found out that it was America giving missiles to the Middle East illegally. Shepard buried the whole situation and was afraid that you were getting too close, so he Gave you the option to leave peacefully. You boys have been relieved. Thank you for your service. I have lying griefs. Don't do that. Don't do that. No one needs to get hurt here. And then you didn't. It, it, it's so fucking dumb. But poof, there's a third missile. You guys make a plan to retake Alejandro's base. You kill Graves in a shitty tank boss fight. Then the hot Mexican girl says that the last mission is in Chicago. Chicago. And guess what? She knew the whole time. Blah, blah, blah. You say goodbye to the Mexicans. And then you go to Chicago. You disable the missile. Find out that Shepard is off the grid and kill a son. Then you get a little cliffhanger that introduces Makarov. Then you see no Russian on a plane in the form of a cutscene where you see nothing. Okay. One time is funny, two times is fucking annoying, no? Modern Warfare 2019's campaign was very controversial since they really villainized Russia and tried to rewrite history. Aside that though, the campaign also sucked total ass and pulled off its punches while having a really bad villain. <laughs> fucking bullshit. You're a fucking miserable drunk. So what did II do? They stayed away from making Russia do American war crimes because they didn't want to get in trouble again. And instead, they used Russia to fuel a plot with Iran and the cartel. They also didn't do anything related to the war zone plot where you kill Viktor Sakaev. They instead made a really boring campaign that plays it safe with no stakes, dramatics, 
or anything interesting. I keep mentioning guts because in the intro of this video, I said that Modern Warfare 2 2009 was ballsy. So let's explain why. Modern Warfare 2 is the most famous Call of Duty due to controversy. It pushed a lot of boundaries and caused a worldwide discussion about violence in video games. But this used to be the selling factor of Call of Duty. COD 4 released in a time where the United States was at war with Iraq. World at War was a brutal story where you played as both Russian and American. And MW2 did not hold its punches one bit. The reboot franchise is a glorification of Western allies. America and Europe good, Russia and Middle East bad. Even with Shepard's betrayal, they clarified that he had good intentions by illegally giving missiles to freedom fighters in the Middle East to help their war with Russia. Shepard's intentions were good, but the shipments were illegal and off the books. No matter what your politics are, for a narrative, it would have been interesting to question the dilemma of getting your hands dirty and how the situation could have both negatives and positives, showing where a line should be drawn and how everybody's in it just to win and will do anything necessary to win, both good or bad. It's what MW2 did in 2009. In Modern Warfare 2, Shepard's motivations were winning no matter the cost, even if America had a start a war to finish it. But those motivations have reason and aren't just there to exist like II. In Call of Duty 4, a nuke supplied to Al-Assad by Zakaev is set off by Mac off, which kills thousands of soldiers from the United States Marine Corps. This event fuels the motivation for Shepard in Modern Warfare 2. Five years ago, I lost 30,000 men in the blink of an eye, and the world just fucking watched. There will be no shortage of volunteers, no shortage of patriots. I know you understand. Shepard is the best representation of getting your hands dirty so the world stays clean. And instead of just going around on stupid fucking monologues, he also proves it with his actions and creates chaos. But side note, the monologues from Shepard are really cool and show off his mindset. They also sound really kick-ass. This is due to Lance Herrickson's performance that steals the show. Learning to use the tools of modern warfare is the difference between the prospering of your people and utter destruction. What you're seeing is advanced warfare. It outshines Glenn Morshower's performance, who plays the new Shepard in I.I., who was also in the original MDB2 as Overlord. Butter 2 1, 15 plus tangos approaching near the diner to the west. Over. His voice acting is still fucking awesome as Overlord, but making him Shepard was a bit of a misstep. Anyway, this motivation from Shepard kicks off the MW2 campaign, creates iconic events. and does everything better than I.I. unapologetically. The two antagonists in MW2 have the same motive. They both want to go to war with each other for personal reasons. Shepard feels that everybody is moving past the events of Modern Warfare 1 and wants to take off the gloves and go to war. So he can wipe out Russia and be a war hero, but he doesn't have any legal reason to since the events of MW1 were swept under the rug. And Makarov wants revenge from the death of Zakaev from MW1. So his revenge scheme is that he wants to lead a Russian assault to invade Europe and the United States. So to begin this journey, you do the most controversial mission in Call of Duty history, which is a terrorist attack. Not a cutscene or a prompt, you actually get to gun down innocent civilians. You play as American double agent Joseph Allen, recruited by Shepard. You're doing a terrorist attack alongside Makarov so you could prove that he did it. You got there by gaining his trust. But he tips off to Makarov that you're American. He tipped off Makarov so that Makarov could kill you, so that the entire terrorist attack could be blamed on you, making Russia start a war so you could counterattack. You will never see something like this ever done again in a Call of Duty game. And that's because of how much backlash Infinity War got for not just the Call of Duty franchise, but the entire video game industry. Popular new video game actually allows you to be a terrorist and kill people. There's no question that there's a correlation between video and game violence and screen violence and aggression in real life. You get to essentially be a terrorist and kill people, and it's very realistic. You have to go in and participate in a massacre of civilians in an airport. And you witness the shooting of civilians in an airport massacre. On March 8th, 2018, former President of the United States Donald Trump held a meeting in the White House about video game violence, where he played an unlisted video made on YouTube by the now archived White House YouTube channel titled violence in video games, where you showed the terrorist attack without any context to why you're doing it, alongside many more graphic scenes in the Modern Warfare 2 campaign without any context. This video released in 2018. The game released in 2009. When the game first came out, it was discussed by every media outlet, where time and time again, no Russian needed to be defended for its context to why it exists in the first place. It's a film. Why don't the government talk about other things in Parliament and save our country and get, and get our country together, as opposed to worrying about uh, damn games? You're not actually a terrorist. You're a CIA undercover agent. Um, 
you, 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 you are a, like a, 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 a fucking People wanted the game banned. Some believe it would create violence in school shootings. And hundreds of debates were held about how this would affect young people playing video games. And it's still used as a scapegoat when addressing how video game violence has affected society. This mission didn't need to happen. They could have skipped past it or just told you what happened, but that's cowardly. And Infinity Ward at the time had some fucking guts. To all those who did a little pog face at some faceless asshole who crafted a three printed gun in a cutscene, it's because you're nostalgic to this. This scene sucks ass. It's safe and bitch made, where this created fucking chaos and kicked off an entire campaign. As reason exists outside of just shock value, and is one of the reasons why the original MW2 is still talked about. It's fucking ballsy to make the United States do a collab with Russia to kill innocent people. And you are doing it. You are killing these innocent people. So due to this terrorist attack, Task Force 141 need to prove that Makarov was behind the attack. And while this happens, Russia invades the United States and wins, which leads to the second ballsy action this game does, which is killing main characters. <laughs> no! I told you many times I wanted to talk about this cutscene, and that's because it sucks. The twist is stupid, because the reason it exists is stupid, and how it plays out is stupid. In MW2, 141 needs to find incrimination on Makarov to prove that he orchestrated the terrorist attack that the United States is blamed for. That's why 141 is in the story. II 141 need to find missiles in the bad guy who wants to use them, and is assisted by the Mexican army and shadow company who is under a private military contract. So both these reasons of involvement lead to betrayal on both sides. Now let's look at both the antagonist. Shepard was involved with a terrorist attack so that he could go to war with Russia after the events of MW1 that killed 30,000 of his men, and his setup worked. He got a blank check to go to war and wanted to win so he could be crowned a patriot. He states multiple times in the campaign that he doesn't mind the chaos and bloodshed that it took to get his blank check and that America would rebuild. It's been a tough week, gentlemen. We've lost more than we ever dreamed, but we will recover. I've got a blank check and we're gonna use every cent of it killing Makarov. Even when Price has a chance to end the war, he doesn't want him to. He just wants to kill Makarov and have it be done with. He doesn't want to stop the war because if he stops the war, then he can't go to war. What's this image you're sending me? You want to put out an oil fire, sir? You set off a bigger explosion right next to it. Sucks away the oxygen, snuffs the flame. Price, you've been locked away too long. Better get your mind right, son. Shepard, are you willing to do what is necessary to win? Always. We got ourselves a pretty big fire. Gonna need a huge bang. You've been in the gulag too long, Price. Focus on taking out Makarov. No time, sir. We need to end this war today. I'm not asking you, Price. This is an order. Here to so him and Makarov aren't friends, he's still a danger to the United States and has to be dealt with. So for this betrayal, Task Force 141 split up to find Makarov. Soap and Price go to Afghanistan, while Ghost and Roach go to his safe house in Russia. In Russia, you don't find Makarov, but you find a bunch of incriminating intel that proves Makarov's involvement. And like I said earlier, Shepard also had involvement with the terrorist attack. So by getting incriminating evidence, you are also doing dirty work, because that evidence also incriminates Shepard, which makes you a loose end. But you just didn't know it yet. That's one less loose end. No! The new Shepard is a hand-fisted bad guy, but minus everything that makes the old Shepard good. We take a shit and we hide it for the good of the world. When we shit, we bury it. That's how it works. We do illegal things so that the world can stay clean. To do good, you've got to do some bad. Remember who the real enemy is, John. And you've forgotten what you're fighting for, John. Every discussion with Shepard is a generic, boring monologue. Even his reasons to be an antagonist are really fucking lame. He had good intentions to supply freedom fighters to take out big bad Russia, but they got hijacked by Russian mercenaries and the bad thing was that it was off the books and illegal. You don't care about his actions or motivations for why. You don't even question his morals or tactics of modern warfare. Hassan tries to give you a bit of nuance, but then is demonized as a dirty terrorist that you have to kill in the end. Price doesn't give a shit about Shepard's motives. He's just upset that 141 didn't get the scoop. We all keep secrets, Captain. What the hell was I informed? We don't bury each other with it, do we? But once again, the twist still sucks though because he gave you an out. You had a choice. The twist has Graves cut you loose and gives you the option to leave with no violence. And even with violence, there's no consequences. Soap gets shot, but it doesn't affect him and he lives. Ghost also lives. And they take the base back and get revenge for trying to kill you 
after you got aggressive. It's a shitty scene and the whiplash right before where you work with Graves and he saves your life multiple times doesn't help this either. Death gives impact for why people pursue further with deadly intent. It also makes the player be on edge because in war anyone could die. Doesn't matter if they are a main character or a minimal character. Griggs and Gaz getting shot in the head gives you a burst of vengeance. So you dome Zakaev in the head. Ghost is a fan favorite character because of his appearance of a faceless guy with a cool skull mask as well as his awesome voice. Tango down. Let's do this! Thunder 2 1! Cleared heart! Come on! Get up! Frag out! Frag out! What the fuck did you just call me? He was also a good friend. He didn't leave you behind when he could have and wanted to make sure you were safe, but you were already dead and just didn't know it yet. Call of Duty is filled with iconic death scenes to both good and bad guys, and the death of bad guys stand out a lot because they did something personal to warrant their death. If you are jumping for joy that all of Task Force 141 get to drink at the bar, all alive while having an Incredibles-like ending that reveals the big bad Makarov, then who is really blinded by nostalgia? Even the minor characters get plot armor. Laswell is kidnapped and retrieved instantly. Rodolfo is left to burn to death by his son who could have just shot him in the head but then he's rescued. Alejandro is rescued and not executed. Shepard doesn't even die. Friends are getting hit in the fucking plate constantly. Okay, fucking you bullshit. You broken? I'm good. Even in Modern Warfare 2019, Alex doesn't fucking die from his sacrifice and comes back as a Battle Pass character. The game is so spineless, nobody dies. For a game that takes place in Modern Warfare, suffering no casualties is not only generic and soft, but it progresses none of these characters or plots and robs scenes of impact. When you shoot Hassan to the head, I felt nothing. Hassan didn't do anything. He wasn't even that fucking radical. You bombed his leader first and he wanted revenge. Even when I killed Graves, who most likely isn't dead, let's be honest, but for the sake of this argument, if he is dead, I was only happy because I played the game on veteran and didn't have to hear his fucking monologue over and over again. He didn't even do anything that bad. He didn't have you and Ghost do his dirty work to then tie loose ends where he sets you on fire to bury your existence. He gives you a choice and kills no one. He doesn't even execute Alejandro. I felt nothing. Graves was really cool before this and I didn't buy him being a villain because it was written like shit. When I threw a knife into Shepard's eye, I felt relief. I killed the two-faced coward sack of shit that killed Roach and Ghost with the knife I ripped out of my fucking stomach to save my friend. Makarov killed Soap and I watched him die. Here he saved my life by sacrificing his. So when I hung Makarov by his fucking neck, I was so satisfied because I got to avenge Soap, Roach, Delta Force, Yuri, and everyone else who got killed by his acts of terror. Who remembers the guy from Modern Warfare 2019? Who gives a shit about Hassan? Who gives a fuck about these main characters? They don't suffer. They're not motivated by revenge or personal actions done to them. Farrah has more depth than these people and her antagonist sucked ass. They get some cool dialogue, but once again, people only like Ghost because of his appearance and edgy aesthetic. This is not enough. These characters aren't the problem, it's just the world that they live in. And the game is written so fucking poorly that they don't get to shine. Something I should address before the video ends is the comparison of soundtracks for both games. MW2 is composed by Hans Zimmer, who's done work for pretty much everyone, like just look at his catalog. He's amazing. And I've been using a lot of the game's OST throughout this video. It sounds good and it's memorable, even 13 years later. II's OST sucks. No way to put it, it's generic and forgettable and it's not even the composer's fault. Sarah Schachner distanced herself from the game's soundtrack because she didn't like how the music was being presented in the game due to it not being her artistic intent. So she really had no creative control with it. She just made music that Infinity Ward wanted and it was just generic filler shit to slap over gameplay and it really shows. None of them really stick out, there's nothing really that memorable or impactful. And the more I think about it, that type of sentiment is just how I feel about this game in general. Modern Warfare 2 2022 is a cowardly animal that's afraid of its own shadow. And when held next to the 2009 game that broke barriers and didn't mind to take risk and leaps, this one is just a puddle cash grab using the same name. Infinity Ward put themselves in a difficult situation where they had to compete with themselves, and when I look at the narrative of Call of Duty, I understand that it's not God of War, Ragnarok, Red Dead Redemption, or any of the complex storylines. But you don't need an awesome narrative to be a fun game. II's campaign is mid, and doesn't live up to Modern Warfare 2. But here's the deal with this video. When I first began writing this video, I had a multiplayer section, so this video is gonna be like around an hour and 10 minutes long maybe, but then they added DMZ, and then they added Warzone, and then a raid, and more content, on, and on top of it being Christmas, I'm, I'm just gonna split this video into two parts. So in the next video, I'm gonna be talking about the multiplayer and everything underneath the multiplayer bracket, which means the next part's also gonna be like maybe 50-ish minutes, but that's all next year, which means this is the last video of this year. Sorry if this is a scuffed outro, I go on vacation very soon and I'm doing holiday shopping and all the Christmassy shit. But if you made it to the end of this video, thanks for watching. Please subscribe, and if you want to see part two, like the video. I also have a Black Ops 2 video that you could watch that's really good. Um, but yeah, this was a year for sure. Not the best. I'll be honest, it wasn't the best one for me. 
but we hit 100K, which is just cool. I also felt my video quality improved a little bit this year as well, and I can't wait for next year. Thanks for everybody who supports these videos and watches these videos. It really makes me happy. <laughs> Christmas time. Anyways, Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays, part two soon. I'm going to sleep. No, loneliness isn't new to me. We done this. This is not the part of mystery. McDonald's, I was broke in paradise. I spoke a person when she said the price. Got me right to master bed into my extra life. Rappers turning boys, boy, turning into psychiatrists.